because on that could I bring you back to China and you've warned that China may not hold as a single country will will the the component parts are they more likely to emerge as democratic states again I think Do we have to be careful in seeking or expecting democracy to be the guiding principle of states in the new era of the world. A democracy has been a fashion which has come into vogue and out of vogue at various times through history. We've seen democracy uh, in the Indian uh, or the states which make up today make up India. We, we saw that there three, four, five thousand years ago. We saw it in uh, in the Hellenic states for a, for a period of time. But it comes into fashion and out of way. If there was one place where Chinese people tried to get into and they would risk going through shark-infested waters, swimming through shark-infested waters, and that was the crown colony of Hong Kong, which was certainly not a democratic state, but it was a state very much under the rule of law. Is that, do you think, what uh, the Chinese people would be looking for? They certainly would be looking for rule of law because rule of law implies a degree of safety. But the, the great success of modern democracies around the world, and particularly in the West, has been to combine rule of law with freedom to the maximum extent possible. So for most people, freedom implies democracy but it's not necessarily synonymous with democracy. Uh, Americans often think that countries like Australia and the United Kingdom are not democracies because they have a monarch at the head of state. However, what we see is the real expression of democracy is the freedom for societies to build consensus between governed and governors uh, th this is uh, often, if you like, the, the, uh, the mandate or the, the bargain which is struck between rulers and, the, and, and ruled uh, in that they must respect each other's absolute rights and, they, and the more that, that that is done, the more successful the society is. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily require what we think of today as democracy, which is ballot box democracy, uh, it requires that constant minute by minute agreement between all elements of society. What we've seen modern democracy transform into is something which is materialistic and transactional. We see people giving their vote, often surrendering their freedom in exchange for cash rewards or material rewards or for shorter working hours or this or that. The reality is that modern democracy has largely outgrown itself because it's given away to, its, to, to voters more than the state can, can bring in. So in other words... Is this, is this ancient Rome again? It, it, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you... you it's like going to Yellowstone National Park in the United States. There's a sign that says, don't feed the bears. Why? <laughs> because the bears don't understand when you have run out of food. <laughs> and where we are with modern democracy is that we have run out of food and the mass of the population, the bears, don't understand. They say, no, no, you must keep giving us food or entitlement. Yeah. They believe in deficit spending, obviously. And deficit spending can only go so far. And it only goes yeah. as, as, uh, as far as there is credibility and prestige in the currency. So you can keep printing uh, paper currency or bonds or debt, and people will keep respecting it as long as that society has real vigor, real productivity, and the prestige of being legitimate. Once so in, if I may bring this to an end, uh, because I don't want to take too much of your time, uh, what you're really saying is the dominant power, normally the United States, the dominant power should not try to impose its ideas of democracy and freedom. It should give 
when, when it does in fact conquer a country, because that happens as we saw in Afghanistan, it should really give the country what the country really wants, rather than trying to impose one single model on them. Is that uh, the conclusion we should reach? It's one of the conclusions. I, I think rather than give them what they want, it should allow the people of those conquered countries to take what they need or to interpret this new gift, if you like, this new opportunity as a chance to build the society that they wish to see. And if it's not the society which we think they should have, that's too bad for us because it's too expensive for countries like the United States or Australia or Britain to go out and create little Americas, little Australias, little Britons, uh, when this, this just takes a lot of work on our part, a lot of expense on our part, and nobody thanks you for it, and rightly so, because you rob people of their dignity, their choice, and their identity when you try to tell them who they should be.